Gu Mingtang, who came from the end of the world, wore into a historical novel and became the original match of the handsome and tragic male lead in the book. The original protagonist had a bad behavior and mistreated the two children. In order to prevent the male protagonist from returning to the city, he even froze the two children and ruined their appearance. Fortunately, it was not too late for her to wear the book. She used the repair agent in the space to cure the frostbitten skin of the two children, avoiding a series of tragedies that followed. She grew the land and raised her children to become rich, but by chance, she followed the path of the male protagonist in the book and became the richest female tycoon. Her two children are even more outstanding than each other. One is a top tech guru, and the other is a well-known celebrity. Lu Yangzhou, who had just returned from the base, found that his wife seemed to have changed. The murky gaze became clear, and when he smiled, his eyebrows and eyes curved, but the gaze at him faded. The most important thing is that the children who originally loved him the most secretly said to their wives, Mom, we are your cubs. Wherever you go, we go. We love you the most. Lu Yangzhou felt a bit aggrieved, looking at his wife with a gentle and affectionate expression. I love you the most, it's clearly me. Han Yanan has been reborn, waiting for Gu Mingtang to die, for those two little villains to fall ill, and for them to land in Liangzhou and look back at her. Unfortunately, she couldn't wait until this day, even though her hair was gray. Key words of the novel Wearing books 80 Being petite by a mischievous big boss no pop-up window, wearing books 80 being petite by a mischievous big boss full collection download txt, wearing books 80. Being petite by a mischievous big boss latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Wearing books you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 1 wearing books Gu Ming Tang, who was sinking in the darkness, felt his shoulder being grabbed by someone, and then the man's questioning voice was in his ear. This voice carries a violent tone, word by word, as if it has been tempered with ice. Where are Gu Mingtang, Ah Hui, and Shui Yen? What are you doing with kerosene? Gu Mingtang, don't pretend to be dead, get up. Gu Mingtang used all his strength and finally opened his eyes. What caught the eye was a handsome young man with clean, cold white skin, messy black hair hanging on his forehead, and tightly pursed thin lips, appearing somewhat sharp and cool. Gu Mingtang was bewildered and shocked. She was in the apocalypse and had not seen humans with normal skin colors for a long time. Under natural disasters, water sources were depleted, and unknown viruses were rampant. Humans either died of heat or thirst, or drank polluted water and turned into ugly zombies. Is this person the highest level of the base, the kind who can drink clean water and take a shower? But it seems that something is wrong. As she woke up, the man asked coldly, Where are Ahui and Shuayan? Upon hearing these two names again, Gu Mingtang, who was still in a state of confusion, simply replied, I don't know. The man frowned slightly, his gaze sinister and scrutinizing. It seems that Gu Mingtang in front of me is very unfamiliar. However, he only hesitated for a moment before turning around and leaving. Gu Mingtang didn't have time to react, and her brain seemed to explode. Memories that didn't belong to her flooded in like a tide. After a few minutes, Gu Mingtang finally breathed a sigh of relief. The eyes are full of disbelief. She actually wore a book. The background is in the 1970s, and the current location is Lingxi Brigade. Her identity is the malicious original match of the tragic male lead Lu Yangzhou in the book. At the age of four in Lu Yangzhou, stepmother Zhang Zhen married her six year old stepbrother Lu Yuanqi into the Lu family. Lu Yangzhou has been rebellious and unruly since childhood, and his relationship with his father Lu Huai is very cold. Later, going to the mountains and going to the countryside, the Lu family had two sons. According to the policy, one of them must go to the northern wilderness to cut in the queue. In order to demonstrate his fairness, Lu Huai personally reported the name of his own son. At the age of 16, Lu Yangzhou went to the countryside, 
while Lu Yuanqi stayed by Lu Huai's side. Lu Huai also reminded his son to build the countryside well and not to embarrass him. Unexpectedly, two years later, Lu Yangzhou was tricked by a village maid. At that time, Lu Yangzhou was only 18 years old. When faced with such a situation, he felt a bit helpless and called his father for help. However, his father gave him a cold and sarcastic scolding, and even let him stay in the countryside forever to farm. Since then, Lu Yangzhou has become indifferent and cynical, and the home in a city has never returned. Later, they had a pair of twins, a boy named Lu Hui and a girl named Lu Xuyan, who are four years old this year. Although it started to be unbearable, for the sake of the two children, this day can still go on. But Lu Yangzhou had bad luck. He calculated that his original body not only had bad behavior, but also often abused the two children behind their backs last year, the college entrance examination was resumed, and Lu Yangzhou was admitted to a certain national defense university. The people in the village are discussing and thinking that they will be abandoned. I accidentally heard that my immediate family members made mistakes and students who were admitted to such universities would be expelled. Yuan Yuan decided to take advantage of his business trip in Liangzhou and set fire to the grain depot with his two children. So today, she secretly took her two children to the grain depot. Under the threat of their mother, the two children crawled through the crack in the grain depot door. Later, they found that they didn't have enough kerosene, so they went home to retrieve it. As a result, they knocked their heads and fainted, just like before. Lu Yangzhou woke up his unconscious original body, but he lied and deceived Lu Yangzhou away. Knowing that the fire couldn't be set off, I decided to tear up the admission letter. When Lu Yangzhou found the grain depot, both children were frostbitten. Due to the severity of the frostbite, it is impossible to cure it, and the two children's psychology is gradually distorted. Although the male protagonist has a wealth that can rival the country, he cannot let his children live like normal people. Growing up, Lu Hui completely blackened out and became the biggest villain in the book, I have been against my father and the female protagonist all along, and in the book, The Past of the Courtyard, this brother and sister have a tragic fate. As for her malicious mother, she fled into the mountains and was torn apart by wild wolves on the night of the accident. It can also be considered as retribution for evil. So, Beauty and strength are innate to the male lead, while tragedy is caused by her village aunt. Gu Mingtang couldn't say what it felt like. Let's be happy, but according to the plot in the book, the two children trapped in the grain depot are now frostbitten. Sadness is beyond words, this era is too beautiful. But this start was really bad. It would be great if the space came along. Although it is only over 50 square meters and there are not many supplies, there are several types of potions, including repair cream for treating skin ulcers caused by zombie bites. This can also treat frostbite. All thoughts were just a few breaths, and Gu Mingtang's movements were faster than her brain. She had already grabbed the scarf and ran out. Race against time, as long as there is a glimmer of hope, you cannot give up. The moment the door was pushed open, it was not the dilapidated courtyard with red date trees that I had just seen from the window, but a small, foggy space. Gu Mingtang was mixed with surprise and joy. Her small space really came along. But how could it be this way? In the past, it was just a matter of thinking and getting in. Is it time to travel with her, the soul has entered, and the space is stuck at the door. Worried about another mishap? she quickly put the repair cream into her pocket. Sure enough, the next second, she stood in the yard. Suddenly looking back, it was still the old wooden door. The space that just appeared is missing. If it weren't for the repair cream in her pocket, she would have thought she had hallucinations. Gu Mingtang no longer cares about space. Now that saving people is crucial, she lifted her leg and ran towards the poplar grove on the north side of the fence wall. Perhaps due to time travel, she found that her speed and strength had also followed suit. She arrived at the back door of the grain depot in the shortest possible time, which was very quiet. 
She took out the child's cotton jacket and hat buried in the snow, shook the snow on top, and then ran to the small door next to the ventilation vent. The small door of the grain depot is locked with chains, but there are gaps that allow children to pass through. Gu Mingtang saw at a glance that Lu Hui was tightly holding Lu Xuyan. They were snuggling up next to a sack filled with seeds, wearing half-worn autumn clothes, their skin had already turned purple-red from the cold, and their bodies were trembling. The four-year-old child is locked up here by his mother, afraid to run or move, and can only keep warm with each other. Does Lu Xuyan seem to be sleeping? Even though she had seen the cruelty of the apocalypse, the scene before her made Gu Mingtang's heart tremble. She lay on the crack of the door and shouted, Ah Hui, hurry up and send your sister out. Let's go home. Lu Hui's eyes lit up when he saw Gu Mingtang. Mom, is it lighting now? Lu Hui looked at his mother outside the door with a hopeful expression in his eyes. When his mother lit the fire, he ran with his sister. At that time, everyone would come to put out the fire, and his mother would definitely be caught. Dad can take them home, and he and his sister won't always get beaten. No ignition, we'll go home immediately. Why? After all, Lu Hui was a child and immediately showed a disappointed expression. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Seems to have a different person you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 2 seems to have a different person Gu Mingtang paused and glanced seriously at Lu Hui before asking, Do you want me to light the fire? Lu Hui fell silent, and the child's natural sensitivity made him realize that something was wrong with the mother in front of him. What is she going to do again? At this moment, Lu Hui's gaze was different from the soft and cute one he had just pretended to be. It was just a four-year-old child, and the coldness and guard in his gaze immediately reminded Gu Mingtang of his own post-apocalyptic self. Her voice unconsciously softened, the crime of arson requires punishment, which will affect your father's inability to read and your future prospects. Lu Hui was taken aback for a moment, and his small face became conflicted. Gu Mingtang had no time to worry about Lu Hui's thoughtfulness anymore. She first threw her cotton jacket and hat in, then glanced at the iron lock and pulled it open. After entering, she pinched the back of Lu Hui's neck in his stunned eyes, causing him to fall into darkness. Thanks to the repair cream, she also gained motivation to carefully dress them in cotton clothes, no longer delaying, lock the door as it was, hold the two children, and run towards home like a gust of wind. In no time, another road came running towards a group of people. Captain Zhou from Luliangzu, along with Gu's mother Lin Shulan and sister Gu Mingli, who were looking for children together. One of them is Han Yanin, a female educated youth. Han Yanin still couldn't calm down, she didn't expect to be reborn. Today is January 6, 1978. If I remember correctly, the two children of Lu Yangzhou were placed in the grain depot by Gu Mingtang and their faces were ruined by the cold. After she verified the fact of her rebirth, she ran out of the educated youth center to find Lu Liangzhou. In his previous life, brother Liangzhou abandoned politics and entered business. In less than 10 years, he created an unparalleled commercial empire in the world. Liangzhou Gu is undoubtedly the proud son of heaven and the emperor of commerce. But his two children were born bad guys, always dragging their feet. They inherited Gu Mingtang's bad genes, and saving them was useless. It's better to freeze to death, which can be considered as a way to eliminate two harms for the future society. So, Han Yanin, who followed behind, was not in a hurry at all. Gu Mingli doesn't like second sister, but she also doesn't like educated youth Han Yanin. Although she ran panting, she gritted her teeth and turned around to ask, Han Jiqing, are you sure you heard a child crying in the grain depot? Of course I'm sure, the voices are still very familiar, just Ah Hui and Shui Yen. Han Yanin was extremely confident. How could they be in the grain depot? Gu Mingli asked in confusion. Han Yanin sneered, what can't your second sister do to prevent Liang Zhou from going to college? Gu Mingli was speechless and her face turned red, 
but when the captain opened the door to the grain depot, she suddenly jumped up and angrily said, Han Jiching, where are people? Han Yanan stood still. The granary is empty without a single figure. Yeah, where are people? Her mind was filled with chaos. At this moment in her previous life, Lu Hui and Shui Yan collapsed at the entrance, already unconscious from the cold. She searched around with an anxious expression on her face. Gu Mingli asked Han Yanan, Han Jiching, those are two children and not two mice. What else are you looking for? I'm looking for a kerosene bottle. Han Yanan didn't know what went wrong, so she had to say, your second sister said a few days ago that in order to prevent Liang Zhou from going to college, she would set fire to the grain depot. She must have let the child come in first to spill oil, and then she could set fire. Han Yanan is not at all guilty, because this is the truth. I saw a small kerosene bottle next to the sack at that time. Everyone looked at each other, and to their surprise, more than half of them believed her words. Captain Zhou is in a hurry. It is said to be a grain depot here, but there is not much grain, most of which are seeds that will be used for spring plowing this year. This is really going to burn. Let's not talk about Gu Mingtang for now, he's also the leader of the team. He yelled at the following members, hurry up and find them together. Lu Liangzhou had a gloomy expression and tried to calm himself down. He confirmed that there were no children in the grain depot and said, Captain, I'll go to the brigade headquarters to borrow the broadcasting loudspeaker. What if the child goes to Hu's house to play with? Go ahead. As Lu Liangzhou turned around and left, he still paused, but what he saw was Han Yanan. Yanan, there is no evidence, so it's better not to speculate. Brother Liangzhou, this is true. Gu Mingtang just wants to burn the grain depot, Han Yanan exclaimed in frustration as he rushed to the back of Liangzhou. Lin Shulan, who had been silent for a long time, turned pale and said, Han Jiching, although my second daughter is not someone, you can't talk nonsense either. Han Yanan's face turned pale, and he did not refute this time because everyone had not found anything. What exactly is going on? Yes, going to Brother Liang Zhou's house, Gu Mingtang not only wanted to set fire, but also tore up Brother Liang Zhou's admission letter. At this moment, Gu Mingtang had already carried his two children back home along the deserted path. She first neatly stripped off the clothes of the two children and began to apply repair cream to them. The repair cream has powerful functions, and once applied, it quickly repairs frostbitten skin. When the sound of searching for someone came from the broadcasting loudspeaker of the brigade headquarters, Gu Mingtang had already wiped all the areas that needed to be wiped, not to mention frostbite, the blue and purple marks that the two children had been pinched out by the original owner were also gone. She reached out her finger and pressed the little girl's face, only to see that Lu Xuyan's eyelashes trembled. Then, Lu Xuyan, who had been sleeping all along, opened her eyes. She pressed Lu Hui again, and Lu Hui, who had been frowning all along, woke up just as she heard the sound of the radio loudspeaker looking for him and his sister. Lu Hui was extremely happy. His father, who had been away for over a month, returned. He stood up on the ground and realized that he was only wearing small shorts, but he felt warm all over. He didn't have time to figure it out, so he hurriedly started putting on his clothes and said, I'm going to find Dad. My sister and I are at home, so we can't make Dad worry. Dad is the god of Lu Hui, and what little Ah Hui admires and loves the most is Dad. Gu Mingtang dressed Lu Xuyan, and she also turned over and got off the con. You look at your sister first, I'll go find your father, she said Lu Hui looked out the window and suddenly exclaimed happily, Dad is back. However, why are there still several people following behind? Originally, Lu Liangzhou was behind, but he ran fast with long legs and was the first to rush into the house. When he saw a pair of children sitting on the edge of the Kong, his heart finally fell into his stomach. A gloomy and disgusted gaze fell on Gu Mingtang, and Lu Liangzhou was taken aback. Although she was still the same woman, her eyes were clear and bright, without the turbidity and malice of the past. 
Although she was wearing a bulky cotton jacket, she had a clear and ethereal aura. She's like a completely different person. Subsequently, Han Yanan's face changed again as he followed in. Although Lu Hui and Lu Xueyan sat on the edge of the Kong in tattered clothes and were thin and small, there was no sign of frostbite. Just as she was reminiscing about her previous life, the two children jumped off the edge of the Kong and threw themselves into Lu Liangzhou's arms. Not to mention being unconscious, it seems that people have also become much more energetic. Gu Mingtang glanced at the crowd and asked in surprise, what's wrong with this? The new book has been released with a fictional background. We hope for your support and wish you all a happy day, end of this chapter. The female protagonist in chapter 3 of the book you are listening at novelfull.audio. The female protagonist in chapter 3 of the book Han Yanin quickly calmed down. She looked at Lu Hui and asked gently, Ah Hui, did your mother just take you and your sister to the grain depot to set fire? Gu Mingtang also looked at the precocious boy. Unexpectedly, Lu Hui shook his head and said naively, Aunt Han, my mother didn't set fire, you can't speak recklessly. Han Yanin choked, truly a madman who could study the virus that would destroy the world. It was not normal since childhood. She had planned to help them gain Uncle Lu's favor after returning to City A. But now it seems that the mud cannot support the wall, so there is no need. Gu Mingtang looked at the girl speaking, who was also Han Yanin, a female educated youth from a city. She is also the female lead in this book. Looking at her eyes and words proves that she has been reborn. Gu Mingtang sneered, Han, what kind of person are you? As a mother, I have nothing to do with you no matter where I take my child. Han Yanin didn't take Gu Mingtang seriously, but his face immediately turned red with ridicule. Aunt Lu complained, although you are a biological mother, Lu Liangzhou is going crazy looking for children. Why don't you keep quiet? Gu Mingtang pondered for a moment, and this matter needs to be resolved immediately. Because she did take her child to the grain depot and it froze for a while. If there was no repair cream, the two children at this time should be on their way to the hospital. Moreover, we cannot expect the two children to justify her lies. She looked at Captain Zhou, whose face was not very good, and her voice was ashamed. Captain, I asked Teacher Zhao about something a few days ago. Maybe Han Jiqing accidentally heard about it, and it's not her fault. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have been obsessed with doing bad things. After getting my head hit, I suddenly realized that doing this was wrong. Fortunately, I was just thinking about it. Even so, I have to admit my mistake to you. The small kitchen suddenly fell silent. The few people who followed were all shocked and looked at Gu Mingtang, who seemed to have been replaced by someone else. Is this the rolling knife meet 205? Captain Zhou is a bit confused. Auntie Lu wondered, did it get better after a collision? Seeing what she said, she couldn't help but say, you didn't do anything, admit what mistake. Lu Liangzhou felt a chill in his heart. The two children had normal skin and cheerful voices, not as if they were frozen to the ground. However, this woman actually planned to set fire to the grain depot with her two children. Captain Zhou quickly cautioned, since you know you're wrong, don't make it again next time. Don't worry, I won't do anything foolish again, Gu Mingtang promised. Han Yanan stared at Gu Mingtang and said, then let me ask you one more thing. Did you tear up Liang Zhou brother's admission letter? Before Gu Mingtang could answer, she looked at Lu Hui and said, Ah Hui, where is your father's admission letter? Upon hearing these words, Lu Hui let go of his grip on his father's hand and climbed onto the Kong, pouting his small buttocks into the cabinet. After finishing his duties, he turned around and burst into tears, Dad, your college admission letter is missing. It must be mom who tore it up, sobbing. The eyes of everyone looking at Gu Mingtang suddenly changed again. Lin Shulan took the lead in questioning, did you really tear up the admission notice in Liangzhou? Gu Mingtang put his hand into his pocket, fortunately, he didn't come too late. I haven't had time to tear it off yet. 
Han Yanan stared fixedly at Gu Mingtang and said, Gu Mingtang, in order to prevent Liang Zhou from going to college, you just tore up the admission letter. How come? The rest of the conversation was interrupted by Gu Mingtang, whose voice was very cold. She stared into Han Yanan's eyes and said, You just said I tore up whose admission letter. Han Yanan was not afraid of her at all. Clearly, you tore up the admission letter from Liangzhou University of National Defense Technology. Did you see it with your own eyes? Han Yanan was taken aback for a moment, then asked in response, Didn't you hear what Ahui just said? Gu Mingtang, I'll ask you again, did you see it with your own eyes? Gu Mingli is going to help second sister at this moment. Han Jiqing, my sister asked you, did she see it with her own eyes? Her voice was a bit angry. Just now, you insisted that Ah Hui and Shui Yan were in the grain depot, and what happened? Lu Liangzhou frowned and unexpectedly remained silent. So, everyone who had returned to the scene looked at Han Yanan. Han Yanan's face turned red and suddenly felt a little fluffy, but everyone was watching her. She gritted her teeth and said, I didn't see it with my own eyes, but my analysis is correct. Jiang Shani's nature is hard to change. You must have torn the notice. Are you sure? I'm sure. Han Yanan said coldly, you not only tore it up, but also threw it into the stove and set it on fire. Gu Mingtang held an envelope made of cowhide paper in his hand and waved it at the crowd before suddenly throwing it onto Han Yanan's face. Analyze it, open your dog's eyes and take a good look. What is this? Han Yanan was unprepared and frightened, causing the envelope to fall gracefully to the ground. Gu Mingli picked it up and glanced at it before suddenly shouting, this is my brother. In Law's college admission letter. Before she could finish speaking, she opened the envelope, took out a piece of paper inside, glanced at it, and handed it to Lu Liangzhou. Brother. In Law, look. The envelope and paper fell into the hands of Lu Liangzhou. He glanced at it without hesitation and said in a deep voice, That's right, it's my admission letter. Han Yanan's face turned pale, and his body shook. It's impossible, absolutely impossible. She couldn't even breathe steadily and looked at Lu Liangzhou, did you read it correctly? After a moment of silence, Lu Liangzhou handed her the envelope. Although Han Yanan's fingers tremble, this admission letter is indeed true. Gu Mingtang sneered and said, Han Jiqing, you really know how to analyze. You even led a group of people to the grain depot to find people, incited others, and even encouraged my child to accuse me of being my biological mother. You are a cultural person with a malicious mindset. By the way, since you are so good at analyzing, then you can analyze the old sow in the pig farm of the brigade and give birth to a few piglets in one litter. Aunt Lu chuckled with a puff. Han Yanan felt a bit ashamed and his mind was also chaotic. She turned around and was about to leave. Han Jiqing, you analyzed without verification and falsely accused me in front of so many people. What do you think you should do? Gu Mingtang pulled me down again with a smile on his face want to leave, how could it be so easy? After speaking, Gu Mingtang also glanced at Lu Yangzhou. Although this book has a female protagonist, it is not a perfect one. After Lu Xuyan committed suicide and Lu Hui was killed, Lu Liangzhou was completely disillusioned and his whereabouts were unknown. The female protagonist made a comeback and still couldn't marry Lu Liangzhou, but she was the only woman standing beside him. So there must be some cat tricks, it depends on whether Lu Liangzhou dares to protect her in front of everyone. Han Yanan stared at Gu Mingtang, who had his hands around his chest. This person was supposed to stir up trouble without reason, but now that she has caught reason, how can she be spared? The pleading gaze turned to Lu Yangzhou. After a moment of silence, Lu Yangzhou said, Yanan, you have indeed wronged her. Apologize. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 He was really angry you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 4 he was really angry Gu Mingtang was somewhat surprised and glanced at Lu Yangzhou, 
who couldn't tell his emotions. Upon hearing these words, Han Yanan did not hate Lu Liangzhou. She only hated Gu Mingtang, the bad woman who ruined Liangzhou's life. If it weren't for Gu Mingtang, Uncle Lu wouldn't have given up his own son and instead vigorously cultivated his stepson. If it weren't for Gu Mingtang, Brother Liangzhou wouldn't have been burdened by his children's lifelong sorrow. It's all Gu Mingtang's fault, she caused it. She will definitely not let her go. Han Yanan finally lowered her head and endured the hatred in her heart, Gu Mingtang, I'm sorry, I apologize to you. Captain Zhou quickly came out to mediate, we are all revolutionary comrades, without deep hatred. After apologizing, we will pass. Let's all go ahead. But he didn't favor anyone either. Han Jiqing, we can't analyze randomly in the future. Han Yanan glanced at Gu Mingtang with a smile at the corner of his mouth, pushed aside the few people at the door, and left without looking back. Lin Shulan finally breathed a sigh of relief and recited Amitba Buddha from the bottom of her heart. Fortunately, this evil person did not completely eliminate the situation. She held on to Lu Hui and Lu Xuyan who were approaching and asked if they would go to Grandma's house for dinner, while Lu Liangzhou was thanking Captain Zhou and Aunt Lu over there. Captain Zhou smiled and said, They're not outsiders, why be so polite? Although Lu Liangzhou has been transferred to the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps for a long time, he has a strong sense of hometown. Every spring plowing, he sends a few plows over, and he has a clear idea. As Lu Auntie walked, she said, this person is also unpredictable. You said that Han Jiqing has a lot of culture and is a calm person. Today, how could you tell the truth based on analysis? I can believe it now. I also believe it. It was both the grain depot and the notification letter, but it turned out to be Han Jiqing's own blind analysis. So analytical, I should go to work at the police station. As people walk away, their voices gradually fade away. Lin Shulan glanced at the northern wall and saw that the dead girl had sold all the grain. Now, she still carried the corn and soybeans on the wooden frame, otherwise it would have been interrupted. The more I thought about it, the more frustrating it became. I didn't even go to see Gu Mingtang. I only talked to Lu Yangzhou for a few words, and Lin Shulan left with Gu Mingli. The room suddenly quieted down. Lu Liangzhou stood silently in place, but his gaze fell on Gu Mingtang. If there is a change, it still has to be ignored. But if we say it hasn't changed, every word she says is well-founded, standing there completely different from before. Can a person undergo such a big change after not seeing each other for over a month? It's like a different person. This idea reappeared in his mind. But he has no time to attend to it for now. He has something else to ask her. But at this moment, Lu Hui pulled Lu Xueyan and stood in front of Gu Mingtang. Lu Hui looked up and said insincerely, Mom, I shouldn't have wronged you just now. I'm sorry. However, Lu Xueyan immediately followed timidly and said, Mom, my brother wronged you. He said he cheated. Gu Mingtang heard Lu Xueyan speak for the first time, with a cute little milk voice and a bit unclear pronunciation, but every word seemed to be stained with cotton candy. The little girl's eyes were bright and clear, and even though her mother often hit and scolded her, she couldn't stop her attachment to her mother. Perhaps children are like this, they are more dedicated to maintaining their relationship with their parents than adults. This kind of Lu Xuyan instantly broke her heart. How could there be such a cute little doll talking? Gu Mingtang immediately softened his gaze, touched Lu Xuyan's head, and then looked at Lu Hui, not very sincere, saying, since you apologize, I'll forgive you. Mom is so easy to talk to, Lu Hui was stunned for a moment. Lu Liangzhou pulled the two children and put on their clothes and hats. When he saw the child's tattered cotton jacket, autumn clothes, and patched tattered cotton shoes that clearly didn't fit, his forehead veins jumped. However, he restrained himself and said gently, Ah Hui, go to the neighboring country with your sister to play. Dad and Mom have something to say, and we will pick you up later. 
Lu Hui knew what his father was going to do and nodded obediently, hoping in his heart that his father would drive his mother away and then take them back to the city. But he still felt uneasy and grabbed his father at the door, quietly pleading, Dad, if mom doesn't agree to let us go back to the city with you, my sister and I won't leave. Don't argue with her, Dad. You can study with peace of mind. My sister and I promise to be obedient and not make her angry. Upon hearing this, Lu Yangzhou lowered his head and looked at his pleading son. He knew what his son meant. This woman, whom he despised and despised, would usually vent her anger on the child after arguing with him. My son is begging him not to provoke and anger that crazy person. After a moment of silence, he closed his eyes, seemingly unwilling to face the suffocating despair of life. However, holding his daughter's soft little hand in his hand, his son carefully pulled at the corner of his clothes. After a few breaths, he resigned and opened his eyes, looking at his son, nodding slowly. Lu Hui led Lu Xuyan, who turned around three times, to the next door. The two children walk a bit slowly, not deliberately rubbing. Their shoes don't fit well, and they walk slowly. Coupled with their tattered cotton jackets, they look like two begging dolls. Seeing this, Gu Mingtang couldn't help but curse her original body. Then he looked towards the approaching Lu Yangzhou. Undoubtedly, he is the male lead. He only stayed in the Lingxi Brigade for a year and was transferred to the Corps based on his abilities. In just two years, he became the chief technician of the Machinery Bureau. I don't know what Lu Fu thinks. Even if she is a village girl who can't stand the show, she doesn't care about her son at all. Do men like to raise sons for others? In fact, Lu Yangzhou's return to City A will not go smoothly, but there are a lot of disgusting things waiting for him. However, after all, he is the male lead, so he should have some halo. Lu Yangzhou suppressed his disgust and anger, took out a wallet and passbook, and placed them on the Kong table. Then he opened the door curtain and pointed to the shelf north of the stove, saying calmly, I have only been away for a month and a few days, and there are only three yuan left on the 800 yuan passbook, a few hundred pounds of grain coupons, and almost a thousand pounds of grain, only one bag of corn and half a bag of soybeans left. After saying these words, he slammed down the door curtain and said, The most important thing is, where are Ah Hui and Shui Yan sweaters and cotton monkey big toe shoes? Lu Yangzhou stared at Gu Mingtang, feeling disgusted and resentful again. You should be grateful that you didn't make a big mistake, otherwise, I will make your life worse than death. He is really angry. My eyes flashed with a killing intent. Because taking the child to set fire to the grain depot really touched his bottom line. Gu Mingtang looked at the empty wallet and a savings book with a balance of only 3 yuan above the Kong table, and all he could say in his heart was MMP. For over a month, the original owner first went to the county town to eat seafood, but after all, the resources were not abundant at this time, and the purchasing power of the money in hand was still considerable. Cotton monkey, cotton cloth, Big Toe Shoes, Martin Boots, End of this Chapter Chapter 5 I agree you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 I agree a few days later, she was taken by her good sisters Li Xiaotsue to play Pai Gao in various villages. She not only played by herself, but also asked her elder brother Gu Qingshan to go with her. The original body not only lost cash and money in the passbook, but also sold grain, and also sold the new cotton clothes and big toe shoes that Lu Yangzhou bought for the child. Not only that, but also a promissory note worth 138 yuan was written. The original body is worthy of the word top dot quality. Do she want to explain? At this moment, Lu Yangzhou asked coldly, Do you still not agree to divorce? Without hesitation, Gu Mingtang said, I agree. Lu Yangzhou was momentarily stunned, and even a hint of amazement appeared on his face. Obviously, I didn't expect the other party to agree at once. The room was completely silent. Gu Mingtang looked at Lu Yangzhou and said in surprise, Do you want me to repeat it again? 
Lu Yangzhou covered his astonishment in his eyes and looked at Gu Mingtang for several minutes before finally uttering a word, okay. But then he continued, when will we go through the formalities? Gu Mingtang, you can do it any time. This joyful Gu Mingtang actually made Lu Yangzhou ponder deeply. Either wise people think too much, he began to probe, the child can't give it to you, I want to bring it back to City A. Okay, I agree. Gu Mingtang hesitated for a moment before agreeing. Today Friday, let's go handle the procedures. Sure, you can wait for me to find the household registration book. Gu Mingtang went through the cabinet and asked when she found the only household registration book she had. Do you want to go to the captain's place to open an introduction letter? For the first time in his life, Lu Yangzhou was unsure what this woman was going to do. After a moment of silence, he put the contents of his shoulder bag into the pocket of his military coat and said, no need. He wants to see what medicine this woman sells in her gourd. The marriage registration office is located in Xianyang Commune. When he arrived at the gate, Gu Mingtang had no intention of reneging. Lu Yangzhou was puzzled, but he did not delay. This person had a bad character and was not worthy of being a mother. Without her, the child would grow even better. But when the two of them entered the office, they realized that it was too lively here. It's not the hustle and bustle of marriage, it's the office where a woman in the divorce office is holding a bottle of dichlorvos with an open lid and crying. Who dares to go through the formalities? I'll take the medicine right away. Even if you guys snatch the medicine bottle and don't die, I'll hang myself at the entrance of the commune. Don't believe it, I'll do what Chu Xinghua said. After pausing for a moment, Chu Xinghua looked at a man standing opposite with a cold expression and cried again, Jiang, you ungrateful white-eyed wolf. What did you say when you married me? Now that you can return to the city, you don't want me and the child anymore. I tell you, there's no way. A big sister said, Chu Xinghua, this is the place of the public house, you can't mess around and pester. But she was also more angry with Jiang Cheng, she doesn't agree to divorce. Her attitude is still so fierce. Come on, come on, come on. What if there's really a life to lose? Alas, since she was able to return to the city, her place has been busier than the marriage registration office. Sometimes I have to work overtime. And Chu Xinghua also saw Gu Mingtang, her eyes widened instantly with disbelief. Jiang Cheng, who was eager for her to take medicine immediately, turned around. Seeing these two people, Jiang Cheng was immediately happy. El Yu Yangzhou, El Yu Yangzhou has also come to divorce. That's great, there's an alliance army here. But he didn't dare to establish connections. Although they are all educated youth, their educated youth is different from him. Moreover, he knows Lu Yangzhou, but Lu Yangzhou doesn't know him. However, there is nothing unknown about Lu Yangzhou and Gu Mingtang. That was quite a sensation back then. He really saw Gu Mingtang for the first time, but he was also stunned for a moment. This. He looks so pretty, right? A large group of people, just turn around and make sure that the first one they see is her. Compared to her ugly and black mother. In. Law, I feel really jealous from the bottom of my heart. At this moment, Chu Xinghua was standing on the table with no one around, probably threatened to leave by her. She still held up a bottle of dichlorvos, her voice hoarse, but shouted to Gu Mingtang, Gu Mingtang, why did you come? Did you get scammed? I tell you, you can't divorce. They dare to get divorced. We drink dichlorvos together, or else we'll hang ourselves at the entrance of the commune. No, we'll hang ourselves in this office and see how they work. Gu Mingtang originally stood behind the crowd, although she had memories, everything around her still made her feel quite fresh. As she was looking around, she was called out and died together. Who will die with you? Even if there is an end to the world, it will be decades later. In such a beautiful era, she cannot bear to die. Chu Xinghua, do you know what the three major happy events for middle-aged men are? 
Gu Ming Tang had to speak. I don't know how to drip, but as soon as she spoke, the surroundings immediately became quiet. Chu Xinghua grabbed the bottle and asked in confusion, what is it? Getting promoted and getting rich is like a dead wife. Lu Yangzhou's forehead twitched with veins, and without hesitation, he pulled Gu Mingtang's sleeve and turned around to leave. Gu Mingtang didn't dare to struggle because her cotton jacket was old, and she had to sell the new one. The cotton jacket was terrible, so don't pull it off, and she followed along. After all, staying here is meaningless. Because Vice President Zhao has arrived, he said he won't be working today and will come back next Monday. Jiang Cheng gritted his teeth. Damn Gu Mingtang, why did he insist on saying that? He was not afraid of Chu Xinghua's death, and even wished for her to die. It's so good to die, I don't even need to go through the divorce procedures. Maybe we can still make some money by mistake. Jiang Cheng's eyes flickered, he turned around and walked away, but as he walked out of the commune gate, he didn't even see Lu Yangzhou and Gu Mingtang. Gu Mingtang and his team went back by tractor. Although Lu Yangzhou felt annoyed that Gu Mingtang was still the same, his gaze couldn't help but fall on her. Just like riding in a carriage when I arrived, there was an indescribable novelty in those eyes. It was as if I had never seen a carriage before, and even had to pull the horse's tail. This time, I was curious to see Lao Wu, the tractor driver, as if I wanted to kick her down and drive. However, in the end, I sat down obediently. Lu Yangzhou calmly withdrew his gaze. At the doorstep, Lu Yangzhou went to the next door to pick up the child, while Gu Mingtang was eager to experiment. Sure enough, the space was stuck at the entrance. Only by pushing open the door of the dilapidated thatched cottage can one enter the space. And, she must be the only one present. A thought in the past was no longer effective. The spaces stimulated by the apocalypse are all growth-oriented. It is said that the power space of the leader of a certain base has almost caught up with that of a county town, and has also developed a spiritual spring. That person will become the savior. Gu Mingtang has only been promoted one level. At present, there is over 50 square meters, but Ling Quan definitely doesn't have it, and the future is also challenging. The crystal core needed for upgrading is not available in this world because it is something in the minds of zombies. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 We Return to the city together you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 6 We Return to the city together Gu Mingtang glanced at the space because the natural disaster began with extremely hot weather. Her two bottles of mineral water, which she was reluctant to drink, were obviously useless. However, she collected a lot of winter clothes, both adults and children. At that time, she thought that if it was too hot, it would get cold, so she kept warm underwear, sweaters, down jackets, and even mink coats these are now of great use. There are also towels, soap, shampoo and other miscellaneous items that will not be used in the apocalypse, but here are all good things. Gu Mingtang was in a good mood. He took out a set of warm underwear, two sets and three sets, as well as three pairs of elastic cotton pants made of lamb hair. He also dug out two down jackets that looked more ordinary for children. After thinking for a moment, he put the children's boots back. It's a bit regrettable that Lu Xuyan must look beautiful in these red leather boots, paired with a down jacket. Even if she returns to City A, she is still the most beautiful cub. She took the things out of the space, entered the house, tore off the logo and put them in the stove, while lighting a fire. However, in the end, she still put them back into the space and put them on when they were all cleaned up. Gu Mingtang poured shampoo into a bottle, and in this era, there were even small animals on her hair, which was disgusting. Speaking of which, she is considered clean. But it didn't stop those little things from giving birth to children in her hair. She was boiling water when the door was pushed open. Originally, it was Lu Yangzhou. After he came in, his nose unconsciously moved, and there seemed to be an additional fragrance in the room that he had not smelled before. However, 
he had something to say to Gu Mingtang. It was considered on the way just now. Chu Xinghua's life and death had nothing to do with him, but it also reminded him that if Gu Mingtang made a mistake and really searched for life and death, he was not afraid of losing face, he was afraid of losing face to his child. I'm also worried that if he really dies, his precious daughter will hate him. That child is very obedient and obedient. She learns to speak and the first thing she shouts is her mother. Even if that woman beats or scolds her, just give her a smile and she will forget everything. Unlike Ah Hui, who is early witted, in her eyes, no matter what, mom is mom. He had to worry about Xuan's feelings. Gu Mingtang boiled a large pot of water and was about to wash his hair when he had to stop and ask Lu Yangzhou standing at the door with his eyes. After careful consideration, Lu Yangzhou said with difficulty, Gu Mingtang, we won't divorce anymore. Let's go back to the city together. Gu Mingtang was also surprised. Finally, she agreed. Why did he change his mind instead? However, without hesitation, Gu Mingtang said, I won't reply. Her space is stuck at the entrance of the thatched cottage, and she won't go anywhere until there's no other way. Lu Yangzhou was stunned again, and a hint of surprise appeared on his face. Obviously, I didn't expect the other party to reject it all at once. He took a step back, why is she still being aggressive? This time, Lu Yangzhou took a few steps in the direction of Gu Mingtang and stopped very close to her. His gaze brushed inch by inch over Gu Mingtang's face, as if he was looking at her true emotions, but his voice was indifferent. What do you mean? Don't you let him take the child back to the city. Although returning to the city may not be as good as Ahui imagined, he will arrange everything well. I just made it very clear. If I don't go back to the city with you, why should I go to the city as a rural person? I have no education or job, so it's better to farm at home. Especially since Lu Yangzhou's family background is so complex, with both stepmother and stepbrother, as well as a psychologically abnormal elder sister, don't seek to suffer. Lu Yangzhou stared at her and said, Okay, but the child needs to come with me first. At this moment, Lu Hui was shouting outside, Dad, are we still going to the supply and marketing cooperative? Gu Mingtang lifted the lid of the pot, and a large pot of clear water was steaming hot. Although the rural conditions were not good, the water here was used casually. She impatiently urged, I keep my word, you don't have to emphasize it. If you want to divorce, I'll be with you any time. It doesn't matter if you don't leave, and if you have children, you can take them with you. It's okay if you don't want to take them. Let's go quickly. Ah Hui called you. Lu Yangzhou furrowed his brows, and what he said was not very comfortable. He really can't see through Gu Mingtang at this moment. However, it was not the character of MOMO either. Lu Yangzhou turned around and left, but Gu Mingtang stopped him and said, There isn't much water in the water tank. Remember to pick more. At night, I'll give a Hui and Shui Yin a bath. Without looking back, Lu Yangzhou suppressed his strange emotions and let out a gentle hum. He walked out of the yard and quickly pulled Lu Hui and Shui Yin towards the supply and marketing cooperative to see if there were autumn clothes and big toe shoes. Cotton clothes may not be available, and he had to take his children to the county town. Even if he doesn't return to the Lu family, he can't let his child dress like a beggar into the city. Thinking of the cotton monkeys and big toe shoes that were already difficult to buy, Lu Yangzhou's face wore a sinister look. Just now, Brother Jiang secretly told him that Gu Mingtang, this fool, had lost his food and savings by playing cards. Obviously, those card games were set for her by Li Xiaotsue in collaboration with outsiders. Because of these thoughts, Lu Yangzhou's face didn't look good. Lu Hui looked up and saw it. He asked cautiously, Dad, is it Mom who doesn't agree? You didn't argue, did you? Lu Yangzhou touched his son's head with a gentle voice. She agreed, and Dad will take you back to City A. Looking at his son's incredulous big eyes, he added, Don't worry, I didn't argue with her. 
since Gu Mingtang was shaken awake by him, that woman has changed. Lu Hui was overjoyed and said, Are you going to see your grandparents? Are you going to see the main gate building? Are you going to eat roast duck? Upon hearing the food, Lu Xuyan hugged the other arm of Lu Yangzhou, raised her small face, and sweetly said, Dad, I want seven pieces of meat. Dad, where do we live? Is it my grandparents' house, said Lu Hui, still excited Lu Yangzhou remembered the phone call he had with his father a few years ago, and to this day, he still remembers his father Lu wise in different words in his ear. People say you are a proud son of heaven, but you were tricked by an ignorant village woman. This proves that you are foolish and incompetent. I am very disappointed with you. Since that's the case, let's stay in the countryside and farm. Lu Yangzhou's face was slightly cold, and he lowered his eyes to look at his son who was eagerly looking at him. In a hoarse voice, he said, we won't go to my grandparents' house. Let's find another place to live. Dad, isn't it that grandma doesn't like mom? Lu Hui pondered for a moment Lu Yangzhou didn't hide his plans from his son. He stopped, squatted down, and said bluntly, Grandpa is your biological grandfather, Grandma is not biological. Lu Hui was stunned for a moment, blinking his eyes as if he suddenly understood. Instead, he comforted Lu Yangzhou, Dad, in fact, kissing may not necessarily be good. For example, his unpredictable mother. Lu Liangzhu it seems to make some sense. But he still earnestly advised, but this empress grandmother has a sweet and bitter face, and too many thoughts. After we return to the city, we should try to have less contact with her. She said not to take anything seriously, and you also need to protect your sister. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Pay 50 cents entrance fee first you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 7 Pay 50 cents entrance fee first Lu Hui stared at his father intently, seeming to understand something, and sighed, Oh, it seems that neither of us father nor son has good luck. Lu Yangzhou was originally very depressed in his heart, but he was still amused by his son's words and curled his lips. Without further delay, he picked up Xu Yan and quickly walked into the supply and marketing cooperative of the brigade with his son. Tsulin County is an agricultural county town, and due to the large scale of the Second Construction Corps, the county town is not small at all. In the west of the city, there is the second largest textile factory in the province. Although it is still the era of planned economy and the reform has not yet begun, it is much looser than in previous years. However, even so, the resources are not abundant. Gu Mingtang has a lot of soap and towels in her space, and she wants to sell some that can be removed from the label to exchange for some money. Gu Mingtang entered the city with a willow wicker basket on his back. It contains 50 pieces of soap, 30 towels, and small items such as hair clips that are easy to pick up. Last night, Gu Mingtang cooked two large pots of hot water, and then Lu Yangzhou picked out half of the water for the night. Although everyone was puzzled, no one dared to ask. Lu Yangzhou has a solitary, aloof and indifferent personality, while Gu Mingtang is mischievous and unreasonable. Therefore, it is difficult for ordinary people to gossip in front of them. Gu Mingtang gave her two children a wash, using shampoo and claiming to have bought it recklessly in the county town. Lu Yangzhou just glanced at her and seemed to have no doubts. After washing, she combed with a comb and tossed around until after 10 o'clock, and Gu Mingtang finally fell asleep with peace of mind. In the middle of the night, I felt a small ball rolling into my arms and casually hugged me. When I opened my eyes in the morning, she was the only one at home. She didn't expect to sleep so heavily that she didn't even notice a note by the pillow. Lu Hui and Lu Xuean were taken to the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps by Lu Yangzhou, probably because they were afraid of her falling into trouble. Now that the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps has not yet disbanded, Lu Yangzhou remains the chief engineer, and there is also his dormitory there. Before leaving, she left 10 yuan and several tickets on the table. She didn't take the money, but she put the tickets in her pocket. 
While thinking about last night's incident, Gu Mingtang walked quickly and soon arrived at the entrance of the textile factory. Before it's time to finish work, the big iron gate is also closed. But Gu Mingtang didn't go to the textile factory. Around here, there is a bungalow with a sneaky trading area, which is also a black market often mentioned in historical texts. It was discovered by Yuan last month when he went to the county town to eat and buy indiscriminately. All the way smoothly to the entrance of the alley, the person guarding the wind was a thin and small boy, wearing a tattered cotton hat, with his hands inserted into the exposed cotton sleeves. His frozen eyelashes were all white frost. When he saw someone coming, his eyes narrowed. Oh, isn't this from the Lingxi Brigade? Having money in hand, being bold and cunning, and having a bad temper. Do you want to buy more, and carry a basket? Then he reached out his hand, palm facing up, and asked Gu Mingtang for money. Gu Mingtang said, I'll give you the money later. Why? The young man suddenly became unhappy. If you want to enter, pay a 50 cent entrance fee first. Gu Mingtang opened his basket and said, take a look at these things. Do you want them? The soap in the back basket is printed oil paper, the towel is rainbow striped, and there are hairpins and headbands, as well as several bottles of face cream. These things were swept by her at a large cosmetic supermarket. She happened to have upgraded her space, so she easily collected everything she could. But later on, every time I saw it, I felt uneasy. It would be great if it were all filled with water and food. But looking at it now, if it were just water in a space, that would be really annoying. The young man looked at everything. Although he was young, he had been working for two years and his eyesight had also developed. He suppressed his surprise and pretended to ask slowly, where did you buy this from? The taste of soap is particularly pleasant, with a delicate and smooth surface, various shapes, and a variety of colors, all resembling artworks. The towel was of a quality in design he had never seen before, soft to the touch, and completely different from the towels he sells now. Not to mention, it was also the first time he had seen such a beautiful hairpin and hairpin. He is the only boy who looks good, not to mention those big girls and little wives. Received it, it will definitely sell well. A few days ago, I met a few people from a southern foreign trade company in the west of the city. At that time, I had money in my hands and looked good, so I directly gave them Baoyuan. Well, my husband was not happy when he came back, thinking that I had bought too many unprofitable items and had no choice but to sell them. Don't leave any ink on them. We don't have this thing in our county, and it's rare in provincial cities. If we're interested in discussing prices, don't delay me. The young man's eyes flickered. Why didn't he hear of any people from the south coming to the west of the city? I didn't expect that Gu Mingtang didn't cover it up. But he really hasn't seen these things. How did it sell? Gu Mingtang said the price. 50 cents for soap, 1 yuan for towel, 60 cents for hair card and head, and 1 yuan and 5 cents for a bottle of face cream. After a lot of bargaining, the deal was concluded at a price that both parties were satisfied with and not happy with. It sold for a total of 110 yuan. Compared to the current prices and wages, there is no loss or advantage. After all, these things can be considered exquisite. They are currently in the small black market, with a lot of things placed in the room. There are not many people, but there is a need for them. They don't let outsiders go either. But because there are no tickets, everything is very expensive. Gu Mingtang didn't plan to buy anything here, he came here just to exchange money. You know, she owes over a hundred yuan in foreign debt. However, she became interested in the pressure well in the room, which she remembered but didn't know how to use. So she looked for the boy just now. Just now, I saw him taking everything to another room and vaguely heard someone talking in that room. Obviously, this is a small gang. Gu Mingtang curiously grabbed the cold handle of the water well and noticed that there seemed to be a traction underneath, but there was no water. She looked inside and said, oh, it's a black rubber circle. 
Just then, the boy walked out of the room and saw Gu Mingtang playing with the water well. He walked over and said, Gu Erji, didn't you see anything that suits you? Gu Mingtang shook his head, but pointed to the well and asked, Donzi, can we drill this kind of well in the house in winter? Sure, as long as you have steel pipes and money, that's all. Young Donzi was thinking to himself. Although the prices of those things vary, they are competitive because they are good, and it's definitely not difficult to sell them. You can earn at least 20 yuan with each move. Then the big brother draws 5 yuan, and he can earn 15 yuan himself. In this case, we can gather enough money before the new year to take our younger sister to move away from our uncle's house. Gunzi remembered Gu Mingtang's words about Bao Yuan just now and asked in a low voice, Gu Erjia, do you still have any at home? Yes, there is. Gunzi smiled and said, back that year, we brought a batch. Let's still pay this price. Let me tell you, if we have goods in hand, we can sell them as soon as possible. These things may not be all scarce in the future, but they will become more and more. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Don't buy, don't look you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 8 Don't buy, don't look Gu Mingtang remained non-committal, but instead asked curiously, how did this well come out of water? Just as Gongzi scooped out a ladle of water from the bucket below and poured it in, he pressed it a few times before the water splashed out from the outlet. Gu Mingtang's eyebrows and eyes relaxed, and this was really good, there was no need to fetch water. I made an agreement with Gangzi to help me contact Master Digging Well, and the price was on the market. Then, I gave Gangzi the address and asked him to go directly to pick up the goods. She couldn't come and said. By the way, if you have eggs, you can help me collect some, and the price is up to you. Gongzi, is Goose Egg okay? Okay. After the agreement was made, Gu Mingtang carried an empty basket to the 100th store. After spinning around, she found that there were indeed big toe shoes worn by children, but only one pair was left. She compared the feet of the two children last night and asked the salesperson to take out the shoes for her to see. Unexpectedly, the salesperson had a bad temper and scolded, You can't look unless you buy. Glancing down at Gu Mingtang, a village girl with a basket on her back, rustic and good. Looking, she was useless, just working on the ground. Gu Mingtang knew that the salesperson's service attitude in this era was not good. Moreover, people from the end of the world have seen more disgusting things than this, so they didn't take it seriously and continued to say in a good temper, Comrade, I want to buy it, but you have to show it to me. What if my child can't wear it? The salesperson glanced at Gu Mingtang and threw the item on the counter as usual. He also said in a sullen tone, Did you wash your hands? Don't bury it in your hands. The sudden sound startled Gu Mingtang, and she was also unhappy. Who did you hit? You spoke so harshly. What attitude are you taking? What's wrong with my attitude? I'll just throw you, what's going on? The salesperson has been imposing for many years. Which common person would come to her and have to grovel and flatter? Gu Mingtang placed her hand on the glass counter and worked hard in secret, almost achieving the expected effect. She stared at the angry older sister and provoked, you have the ability to throw me again. People gathered around and the place suddenly became lively. The salesperson felt that if she was scared by a village girl today, it would be ruined in the future. She picked up her big toe shoes and slammed them down, shouting, I'll just throw you, what can you do? As soon as the words fell, there was a loud explosion, and the glass on the counter cracked and shattered. Inside the counter were piles of socks and protective gloves. At this point, all above is broken glass. There was an instant silence around, and those who were planning to buy something or watch the excitement froze. Gu Mingtang smiled and said, you can't do anything. If you like to throw it, just throw it. It's also a public property, and if it's broken, I won't let you compensate. By the way, please give me an invoice. I'll take these big toe shoes. 
the salesperson stood still, looking incredulously at the broken glass. Who said not to compensate, she has to compensate. At this moment, Gu Mingtang heard a familiar little milk voice outside the crowd, as if someone had covered her mouth. She couldn't help but turn her head and saw Lu Hui dragging Lu Xuyan. She could clearly hear Lu Hui walking and saying, You read it wrong, that's not mom. Mom is sleeping at home. Let's hurry up and leave. You called mom the wrong way. What if that woman hits you? Let's go. The shoes of the two children still don't fit well, kicking and stomping, looking a bit pitiful. But Lu Hui, this little brat, is really full of scheming. He's not mistaken for the wrong person, he's afraid of losing face. Despite feeling upset, Gu Mingtang still felt uneasy, regardless of the silly salesperson. She squeezed out of the crowd and saw Lu Yangzhou carrying a canvas bag and leaving with his two children. Fortunately, there were too many people here. Lu Yangzhou went downstairs with his two children, but he didn't see her in the crowd. Gu Mingtang picked up the big toe shoes again and realized that no wonder Lu Yangzhou didn't buy them. There were problems with these shoes, big and small, and no wonder they didn't want people to see them. It must be this woman's mistake. Gu Mingtang said, Big sister, years of banging and falling, even an iron plate can fall out of a pit, let alone glass. If you don't like this job, don't do it. Let someone who can truly serve the people come. You're not just occupying the pit, but also acting as a troublemaker. It's really embarrassing for all the employees of the first department store. And these shoes, don't pretend to deceive people. How can children wear them when they're young and old? After speaking, he picked up the basket on the ground and walked forward leisurely, as if carrying a branded handbag. Someone in the crowd whispered, this girl's words really make sense. This salesperson has a terrible attitude, he dropped a pair of gloves with a loud bang. Today is her unlucky day, so I don't believe I won't compensate if I break the glass. I heard she has a relative relationship with the manager. Shoo! The salesperson finally reacted and shouted angrily, Who is that? You stop for me. Gu Mingtang continued to walk slowly, too lazy to bother her. It's also a coincidence that the store manager really came. Because someone greeted him, Manager Zhong, come and inspect the work. Manager Zhong was dressed in official attire, draped in a military coat, with hands behind his back, and nodded respectfully to the old man who was talking to him. Gu Mingtang paused for a moment, then stepped forward and directly reported, Manager Zhong, I need to report something to you. Manager Zhong was the first to encounter a problem he had reported to him, and it was in public that a sense of mission arose. He said seriously, you say. Gu Mingtang pointed at the salesperson who looked at her incredulously and said, however, you need to take a look at the counter glass first. She smashed it. When Gu Mingtang came out, he naturally didn't see the three of Lu Yangzhou. She squinted her eyes. This building was originally built by Russians, and it has a unique and high dot quality exterior. The location is good, so when she has money, she will buy it and turn it into a large supermarket. As for the salesperson, he is currently crying. Not only did she have to pay for the glass, but she was also criticized by manager Zhong. It is estimated that next time she comes to buy something, she will not be allowed to sell it to her. Gu Mingtang doesn't think it's her fault. A salesperson, who gives you the right to shout and speak ill of customers. It seems that changing it makes sense. At the very least, let these people truly put the word service in their hearts. Gu Mingtang followed the crowd and ran away. Coincidentally, she saw Lu Xueyan pulling her hand to land in Liangzhou not far away, crying and unsure of what to say. Lu Hui followed silently with a drooping head. The father and son entered the 100th store again. After pondering for a moment, Gu Mingtang still left. She knew that it must be Lu Xueyan who didn't give up and wanted to go back to find her mother. The lying Lu Hui didn't argue with his sister. End of this chapter. Chapter 9
Establishment of Bureau You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Establishment of Bureau Gu Mingtang went to the grocery store and bought a bag of orange candy and two pounds of pork belly. She also wanted tickets for eggs, so she could only buy half a pound of eggs. She also bought several things that the supply and marketing cooperative in the brigade did not have. Later, I went to the pharmacy to buy several packages of lice medicine, after putting them separately, I took Mr. Liu's carriage back home from the village and took out a pair of small black cotton shoes and the small red leather boots from the space, along with warm underwear, four pairs of socks, and two down jackets, all of which were placed in the cabinet. Gudong Gudong drank a large bowl of hot water, and Gu Mingtang made himself egg noodles, which were brought back by Lu Yangzhou last night. Wrapped in newspaper, it looks like seven or eight pounds. Speaking of which, Lu Yangzhou has good cooking skills. The hot soup noodles made last night tasted much better than her. After finishing her meal, she cooked a large pot of hot water before taking the room seriously. This house is too rudimentary. At first glance, there are only two rooms, one for people and one for cooking. There isn't much furniture either. There are two red painted wooden cabinets on the north wall of the bedroom, an eight immortals table on the west wall, portraits of great figures on the wall, and a reed mat on the con. The walls and ceiling in the room are not only mottled, but also black, really old and dilapidated. But now it can't be flipped over. What if one E moves and her space runs out? Thinking of this, she stood at the door, took advantage of being alone at home, entered the space, and began to inventory the things in the space. The space covers an area of over 50 square meters, with a height of 2 meters. The shelves she received are placed around her, with many boxes piled up in the middle, and there is nothing but junk. She checked the sanitary napkins and it seems that they can be used on the day they can be purchased on the market. There are actually many compressed cotton and blankets stacked in the corner to the east. There are also other bedding items that are collected at a home textile store. I used to not want to come in, but now when I look at these things, they are all piles of bills. Gu Mingtang went out satisfied and began to unpack the bedding as soon as he entered the house. After that, he soaked the bedding and pillowcase in a large wooden basin filled with hot water. The cotton covers inside were actually fine, and could be used with a flick, but it was uncertain what was inside. Therefore, Gu Mingtang carried all the cotton covers outside and threw them into the snowdrift next to the house, freezing a small thing to death. Afterwards, there was a scrubbing, and with great strength, she twisted the sheets dry and temporarily hung them outside. One turn, it freezes hard. Give it a try, you can still hear a noise. This morning, what Gu Mingtang was wearing inside were all her own clothes. I just flipped through them and found that there weren't many of them in their original clothes. They were wrapped in leather bags and all stored in the warehouse to the west. As it was getting dark, she prepared to go find Li Xiaotsue. Li Xiaotsue is the eldest daughter. In law of the Wu family, several years older than her. At first, she played with Gu Mingtang a few times, and after tasting the sweetness, Gu Mingtang went to find his brother Gu Qingshan, who also loved playing. I thought I would win, but I didn't expect the two of them to lose more than 800 together. Gu Qingshan has also issued a IOU of over 100 yuan now. The two of them add up to exactly 300 yuan. According to the prices of this era, this is a huge sum of money. Gu's family is very poor, and she doesn't have a job. How dare the creditor Li Xiaotsue lend them money? Is it because there is Lu Yangzhou behind the Gu family? Also, Li Xiaotsue is also a village woman, and her parents-in-law are not wealthy. Is she so wealthy herself? Just as she was thinking about it, Li Xiaotsue peeked into the yard. Gu Mingtang didn't let her in either. Before Li Xiaotsue could speak, Gu Mingtang pulled her over and lowered her voice, My home in Luliangzu has returned. He hasn't found out about losing all his savings, nor did he know that I borrowed money from you. I didn't say anything to anyone. You can rest assured with my elder brother, and I lied that I only sold the food for the purpose of entering the city. 
Wait. Li Xiaotsue stopped. What's going on? Li Xiaotsue looked at Gu Mingtang, and when it comes to character, there is nothing more annoying than her in Ten Miles and Eight Villages. When it comes to appearance, there is no one from Ten Miles or Eight Villages who looks better than her. The eyebrows are curved like a crescent moon, and the eyes are full of autumn water, especially with a rare fair and delicate skin color among rural people. Her hair is thick and dark, and she has a typical oval face. Without her fierce aura, Gu Mingtang's smile is so beautiful that people cannot take their eyes away. Li Xiaotsue felt something was wrong, and she also felt that today's Gu Mingtang made her jealous eyes turn red, especially the word entering the city. Thinking of the person's instructions, she hurriedly said, Are you going to the city with Lu Yangzhou? That's right, so while landing in Liangzhou and not at home, I want to salvage the capital and repay the money I owe you. However, I don't have any money in my hands. If you can lend me a loan, let's play another big game tonight. I'll bring my big brother, but I don't believe it. We can't play with those outsiders anymore. I don't know if it's due to the plot or deliberate lowering of intelligence, but currently no one knows that Li Xiaotsue still lent so much money to the Gu siblings. Gu Mingtang's eyes lit up with unwillingness and greed, and he sighed, Oh, I guess you don't have money either. Can't you go? Sure, I came to see you today just for this matter. Wait for my message, and once I'm in touch, I'll find you. Thinking of the unfinished task, Li Xiaotsue was eager to give it a try. This time, it is guaranteed that Gu Mingtang will lose herself all to those outsiders. As for Gu Qingshan, I really can't take him this time. So she instructed, but don't bring your big brother this time, do you hear me? Why? I'm still playing with a few old ladies this time. What are you doing with him? Gu Mingtang hesitated for a moment before urging, you go and contact me quickly. Li Xiaotsue suppressed her excitement, and when this was done, the person not only gave herself 200 yuan, but also arranged for her to work as a worker in the city textile factory. Gu Mingtang squinted her eyes, feeling that everything she had done was just a trap. If she didn't handle it properly, she would be exposed sooner or later, and it was even harder to say at that time. Think about it, it's quite annoying. It's better to end up being cowardly and incompetent in the original body. Look at how brave you are. During the month of Lu Yangzhou's business trip, playing cards or setting fires, which is not illegal. Gu Mingtang quietly walked out of the courtyard. In northern rural areas, the land was vast and the people were sparse, and the houses they built were all single doors and courtyards. There were hardly any small alleys, and it was difficult to track them, especially when walking in the snow and making squeaky noises. However, she still saw that Li Xiaotsue's direction was not towards the Wu family, but towards the educated youth point. Educated youth, the reborn female lead Han Yanin. Previously, there were more than ten educated youth in the school, but now some have returned to the city. Two of them have been admitted to university, one of whom is Han Yanin, and the other has already left. Han Yanin is preparing to go with Lu Yangzhou. There seem to be only three people there now. Gu Mingtang followed from a distance, and Li Xiaotsue had no idea that she would be followed. So, when it was confirmed that Li Xiaotsue had entered the educated youth center, Gu Mingtang returned home. After patiently waiting for an hour, when it was getting dark, Li Xiaotsue arrived. End of this chapter Chapter 10 an account for deposits and grain you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 An account for deposits and grain this time, Li Xiaotsui entered the room and handed Gu Mingtang 300 yuan. Gu Mingtang happily wrote an IOU, and she easily deceived Li Xiaotsui by imitating Gu Mingtang's tiger clattering behavior before. The two agreed to set off after dinner. Li Xiaotsui didn't doubt him and left happily. Gu Mingtang doesn't know who gave this money to Li Xiaotsue, but after thinking about it, there should be an answer tonight. She took advantage of the darkness to go to the police station of the brigade and found the on-duty son Gongan. She first admitted her mistake and said she wanted to make a name for herself. 
can we go a rest together tonight? Sun Gongen has been worried these days. There is a task above, but he has no one under his command. He only caught a group of players playing cards, and the total amount is less than one yuan. This one costs 300 yuan, and he participated in both local and foreign activities. There was a lot of commotion. Are you sure they can all go tonight? As long as I go, they promise to go. Gu Mingtang was very confident. Why? Sun Gongen asked in confusion, is she still the leader? Because my husband is Lu Yangzhou. Sun Gongen felt a little relieved and looked at Gu Mingtang in the dim light. He tentatively said, you're also having fun here. Why do you want to catch them? Besides, if you really want to catch them, you won't be able to escape your past troubles. So, if I help you catch the big one, isn't that a case of sacrificing one's own life for meritorious service? Gu Mingtang suddenly showed a look of resentment again. Sun Gongen, to be honest, I was tricked by Li Xiaotsui. That woman deliberately took me into the pit. If we really want to catch someone, you should try it carefully. Her husband and wife, Li Xiaotsui, don't even have money. How could she borrow 600 yuan from me? It seems that the power of the plot god has been weakened. Sun Gongin's slightly unclear mind suddenly became clear just now. No wonder he felt something was wrong when he heard this. The original problem lies in Li Xiaotsui's 600 yuan. He asked Gu Mingtang not to panic and to follow Li Xiaotsui. He will arrange the next steps, but he hopes that Gu Mingtang will cooperate strongly and not make any unnecessary trips. This, Gu Mingtang knows very well. She returned home. Looking through the pitch black thatched cottage from afar, Lu Yangzhou left a note saying that he would return home in three days. Gu Mingtang was happy and quiet, and it happened to solve this matter. There was no communication, I don't know when Lu Yangzhou will take his child back to the city. But she hopes to clarify this matter and give an account to her savings and food before Lu Yangzhou leaves. She patiently waited for Li Xiaotsui. In the winter of the northern land, the night comes quickly, and almost in the blink of an eye, the night sweeps through thousands of households. At this moment, the dim yellow lights in the National Science and Technology Academy of City A lit up one by one, adding a touch of warmth to the cold night. There is a bright red brick and tile three-story small building on the north side of the road. Lu Huai held the transcripts of various subjects landing in Liangzhou, his face calm, and he couldn't tell what he was thinking. My grades in Liangzhou are very good, and I am proud of him, said my stepson Lu Yuanqi with a smile as he stood aside Lu Yuanqi's mother, Zhang Zhen, also praised, although she married a rural wife and had two children, it did not affect her grades. Despite facing adversity, this child still worked hard and did not disappoint you, Lao Lu. Lu Yuanqi's wife Shen Wan came down from upstairs, holding a pile of things. When she heard the words, married a rural daughter. In dot law, her heart sank and she couldn't express it. Lu Yuanqi quickly took it over, and Shen Wan regained her composure and said slowly, This is the clothes I found for the children of the Liangzhou family. They were all bought by uncles and aunties for Xiaonan and Ziki, and haven't been worn yet. Zhang Jin kindly reminded, the hygiene conditions in rural areas are not good, and those rural people do not like cleanliness. There must be more lice and fleas. Remember to bring some medicine over. Lu Yuanqi nodded and said, hmm, I've brought everything I need. As he spoke, his gaze fell on his stepfather's face. Seeing that he was still calm, he was somewhat uncertain, but he still said, Dad, do you have anything else you want to bring to Liangzhou? Lu Huai remained silent. Zhang Jinchen said strangely, if you have anything to say, it's not too late for the father and son to meet again. By the way, you and Shen Wan should also pay attention to safety along the way. I heard that the roads in the north are all snowy and difficult to walk. Shen Wan was very worried. What if that rural woman wants to follow her back to the city to the death? We don't have any extra rooms for her to live in. Besides, she must be lazy, dirty, 
and tacky. She hasn't seen these things in our house before. Can she use the bathroom? Can she use the gas stove? She will definitely make our house messy by then. I heard that rural people don't take a shower once a year, and the smell in our house can't smoke our two children. She was almost watched by Lu Huai as she grew up, and now she has become a daughter. In law again. Naturally, she is similar to her own daughter, so she always speaks without hesitation. Lu Huai finally spoke up and asked Shen Wan, So what do you say to do? Shen Wan's voice was cold, divorce. Lu Yuanqi's face changed and he said, Wanner, what are you talking nonsense about? Zhang Zhen is also unhappy. How could Lu Yangzhou divorce that rural woman? No, it's better to be locked together for life, but in fact, it's better not to come back forever. So, everything in the Lu family belongs to her, her son, and two grandchildren. Unfortunately, she even resumed the college entrance examination, and Lu Yangzhou was admitted to National University of Science with the first place score. He deliberately came to add trouble to her. A cold gaze swept over Shen Wan. Don't think you don't know her caution, take it second. He he, if it weren't for her son's liking, she wouldn't have let Shen Wan enter the Lu family. She clenched her hands and Zhang Zhen tried her best to make herself smile kindly. Wanner, this is not acceptable. Liang Zhou already has two children with her. How can we say that divorce means divorce? It's okay. You come teach her. There are no fools in the world, and teaching will teach you. Shen Wan gritted her teeth and remained silent, with a dim light flashing through her eyes. Yes, she can teach her. She will definitely teach her well. Lu Huai put away her transcript and said, Your mother is right. She won't be able to attend school, and the child is too young to be without a biological mother. As soon as these words were spoken, both Lu Yuanqi and Zhang Zhen's faces changed. However, Zhang Zhen immediately smiled and said softly, By the way, Lao Lu, Mayin called during the day and she said she wanted to go with her. Lu Huai frowned, his eldest daughter also felt a bit headache. He waved his hand and said, There are two cars. If she likes to go, she can go. Moreover, if the elder sister and elder brother personally go to Bidawang to pick him up, that little brat should calm down, right? Lu Huai covered his chest and let out a faint sigh. Upstairs, Shen Wan whispered to Zhang Zhen, Mom, older sister said she got the best lice medicine and shampoo. You didn't prepare it well, it tastes bad, and it's not good for your health. She told me not to let you put it in. End of this chapter.